Shalom, this is Bayadu with Hebrew Garment. So I want to be clear that um, I'm not putting pressure on anyone to, to wear Hebrew clothes. What I'm putting pressure on is for you not to put fringes and ribbon. Basically, the commandments in Numbers 15 and 38, Yah commanded us to wear zitzits, which is the Hebrew word for um, fringes, um, which has been translated as fringes, but that actually means lock. He told us to wear our, 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 our tassels, our locks, on our clothes, basically. He didn't have to say a Hebrew garment. Put your fringes on a Hebrew garment. He didn't have to say that because that should be obvious. But for some reason, it's not obvious. Many Israelites thinking you can just put on fringes on American clothes. Why do you think that the Most High thought that? Because in Zephaniah 1 and 8, he said that he hates foreign apparel. American clothes, Chinese clothes... Um, East Indian clothes, Muslim clothes, these are all foreign apparels. African clothes. I love this outfit. You know, I think this might be my favorite outfit. This is not a dress, this is an outer garment, and I'm wearing a dress under it. And I was gonna save this dress for the Passover, um, but I might have to make another one. I mean, I really do like this dress. I'm gonna wear this today. Um, it's not a dress, um, this outer garment. I really like this. And, you know, you could just wear this on top of. Let's say you have American clothes. You could wear this on top of your American clothes and, and then you have a heap of garment um, right, covering it up. Nobody sees it. And if you were to buy three of these, for example, um, your underclothes would be the one getting dirty, like if you sweat. But on top, it would be a heap of garment. And you could come home and you could basically put it to the side and it won't get dirty. And you'll, have, um, you'll be able to build your, your clothes um, that way. So if you don't have money, there's really no excuse. You could have an outer garment and, and wear that when you're walking about. And, and if you're not, let's say, doing dishes or cleaning your house, you could just put this on. This is so comfortable. I mean, I really, really genuinely. And FYI, Israelites who say they're offering Hebrew clothes, everybody don't know the seven clothing Torah laws. I teach it and I try to tell people, but you know what? I got to say that there's a conflict of interest when I tell people in business, Israelites in business selling clothes, and you would be surprised. I actually do confront people concerning the clothes that they're making for Israelites. And I tell them, look, the ribbon is not supposed to be blue, it's supposed to be violet. They don't want to hear me, they block me. And sometimes I will post um, some of my interactions on my page, and I'm trying not to. I deleted yesterday's post concerning um, Wooly Fringe. I deleted it, you know, I actually didn't mean to put her on there, but I deleted her, um, her, her post, my comments. I wanted the comment to be seen, and instead, um, and she kind of got offended, but I actually wanted my comment concerning um, American clothes having, having fringes. Like, who cares if American clothes have fringes? Whether it's a Chinese outfit or an Indian outfit, if it has fringes, it doesn't make it a Hebrew garment. Many people are thinking because an outfit has fringes, and now it's a Hebrew garment. This garment is Hebrew because, first of all, the style is Hebrew, okay? It's modest. It's 100% linen, so on 100% linen thread. The ribbon is 100% linen, the friend is 100% linen, and this is, it's made by me, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, okay, so I'm keeping the Torah laws, I'm, I'm not a Hebrew Israelite who's not keeping the Torah laws, so you can have confidence in the clothes I make, but not everybody um, who's a Hebrew Israelite is, you can have that confidence, if they're not teaching you the Torah laws, how can you say they even know it, you can, how can you even assume that, so this is a Hebrew garment, um, because I'm keeping the seven clothes, clothes and Torah laws, and the style is there, what I want to say is that Zephaniah 1 and 8 was mainly talking to the leaders. If I am coming across with some scriptures trying to convert people to Yah, and I'm wearing American clothes, should you hear me? Should you really follow me? Zephaniah um, 1 and 8 is talking about directly to the princes, the kings, the king's children. Why? Why, you might ask? Because they are the ones that the Israelites and the people see. They are the spokesmen of the Most High. The Aaron was required to have extravagant outfit and his outfit was very particular because he was a spokesman. Okay. If you're a spokesman of the most high and you're, you're teaching scriptures. Oh yes, you are required to wear an authentic Hebrew Israelite clothes. But if you're just a regular common person, I'm not saying you shouldn't wear a Hebrew garment, but it's less, it's less um, required for you. While it would be good for you to represent the Most High, you're not in a position to represent. You're a common person. Not common as in bad, but you're not wearing um, the, the hat. You're not representing him. 
But if you're speaking, um, if you're trying to have a congregation and you're speaking amongst the people and you're representing Yah and you don't have Hebrew clothes, who are you really representing? Who are you trying to gather the people for? Because you're not wearing your proper apparel. There's a proper uniform. If you're a police officer, we need to see your uniform. If you're a doctor, we need to see your uniform. If you're a priest, you don't think you, we need to see your uniform? Of course we do. That's what Zephaniah 1 and 8 was talking about. So you're going to come to the Most High and represent the Most High. You're going to come wearing a foreigner's apparel? Are you kidding me? When you think of Moses, do you really think he came wearing Egyptian's clothes? When he came back as a Hebrew Israelite, a, a, you know, a new person, you think he came back wearing um, e Egyptian clothes? I don't think they really recognized him. I'm pretty sure he came back wearing the proper apparel. He had to represent his nation. He came and said he was of the Most High. He came to get his people. Obviously, he couldn't look like an Egyptian. So if you want to represent yourself and you want to help the movement, don't wear American t-shirts or fringes. Come on. We could do better than that. If you don't have enough money, wait. Wait for the money and, and then invest in one heap of garment. Like I have right here. This is, this is an outer garment. It's great to start with. Start with an outer garment. Okay, and, and then you could have it once, one, one garment a month or one garment every three months. At least on the high holy days, you don't think you can have a proper Hebrew garment? One, one outfit a year? Okay, I mean, what's wrong with putting your outfit on repeat? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Let's not wear American clothes or foreign clothes or fringes. And every outfit that has on fringes doesn't make it a Hebrew garment. Come on, we could do better than that. We can do better than that. We're, we're misrepresenting what the nation is supposed to look like. We're supposed to, we're supposed to appear with, without signs on our clothes who we are. People are supposed to be able to identify us with style. When you see a Muslim, you, you could identify them. But when you see an Israelite, they, they look like they have on Walmart shirts with fringes. That's how you identify an Israelite. Is that how you want the history to go down? Is that how everybody wants? I'm asking. Do you want to be recognized as Hebrew Israelite groups that grab American clothes from the Gap or whatever store, H&M, and we throw on fringes on our clothes? Or we grab some Muslim apparel and we throw fringes on their clothes? Is that is that the look you want? You know what? Israelites selling fringes, polyester fringes. Oh, my goodness. That's a new topic right there. That's just a whole other topic. You're selling polyester fringes to go out on cotton clothes? Number one, polyester is a synthetic fiber. It, it's mixed. The, the name is polyester. Why are you even offering that, that, that Frankenstein material? And, and then you're offering blue ribbon. Blue ribbon, really? You haven't studied the Hebrew word blue is really not blue. It's a violet. There's so much. There's so much. But I made the seven clothing Torah laws that your elders forgot to tell you about video. It's all in there. This is just the shalom wake up call and for... For those who haven't watched my one hour and a half video, go watch it. I put out that information for free. It's there. You know, I'm not hiding that information. I don't want to hear any more excuses. I'm, I'm kind of tired of seeing Israelites not, um, not jumping on the board, um, on, the, on the Hebrew clothes, you know, wagon or whatever you want to call it. I'm really tired, though, of Instagram people liking um, people wearing T-shirts or fringes. Especially the ones that, that know the clothing Torah laws. Why are you liking people wearing t-shirts and fringes? You should be rebuking them. So I have, I have this strong fire inside me. And I quoted some scriptures um, on the recent post. I have this strong desire and fire in me to say something. But you guys don't have that feeling? You don't, have that, you don't want to rock the boat? Everybody wants to speak smooth words? Is, is that where we're going? We don't want to offend. We don't want to... Um, we don't want to, we don't want to shake things, but we need to shake things because things are not right. Shalom.